right. Thank you, Mr. President. Madam Sekagia, as a member of the Women Human Rights Defenders International Coalition, ISHR welcomes your report. Your focus on women human rights defenders is an important contribution to the efforts emphasizing particular challenges and specific protection needs. States have a responsibility to develop tailored responses to these needs, whether violations are committed by state agents or by non-state actors. Your focus on women human rights defenders is an important signal to the Council, the entire UN system and regional human rights systems who look for you, to you for guidance. We therefore encourage your continued leadership in this regard. We particularly welcome reference to addressing structural discrimination and, in, and inequality in regard to the protection of women human rights defenders and applaud the acknowledgement of states this morning that the rights of women to participate in public life is key. The risks faced by women human rights defenders, as you rightfully point out in paragraph 103, cannot be conceived of as separate from the political, social, economic, environmental and other systemic factors which produce and reproduce conflict, displacement, inequality, violence, patriarchal attitudes and practices. Challenging these structural and systemic factors are fundam fundamental measures to effectively protecting women human rights defenders. This is the starting point for understanding why the experience of women human rights defenders is particular and we hope that states will continue to build on this foundation for the future. We also look forward to, he forward to hearing from you how you will continue to build the gender perspective of your mandate. Madam Rapporteur, ISHR welcomes your consistent and inclusive approach. We appreciate the clear focus in your report on violations against defenders working on women's rights or gender issues, including lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and intersex rights. As you point out, this group is thoroughly heterogeneous and includes both women and men working on a large range of issues. You clearly demonstrate that violations against women human rights defenders, including against persons working on LGBTI issues, are not exclusive to any region of the world. To the contrary, such violations exist around the world. It is therefore vital that states from all regions take the responsibility of protecting all human rights seriously, even if that requires arduous work in promoting an inclusive human rights culture in their societies. In this regard, we also welcome the contribution of Mr. Bielefeld in highlighting the central role education plays to combat stereotypes. Such stereotypes undermine the environment for defending rights. Finally, and unfortunately, Mr. President, we heard today renewed attempts by some states to undermine the universality of human rights and discredit women human rights defenders, seeking to exclude some groups of defenders from equal protection by creating absurd notions of social entities that are not consistent with the recognized human rights in the UN system, puts the concept of human rights on its head. Human rights are held by individuals by virtue of their inherent dignity as human beings. The resistance by some states to serious discussion in the Council of violations faced by LGBTI defenders is an insult to human rights defenders who continue to be killed, threatened, illegally detained and discriminated, discriminated against. The same states recently told the Council and the world that a new dawn has come and that they will, quote, no longer tolerate inequalities and injustice in their societies. Madam Rapporteur, what do you plan to do when faced with states that fail to protect women?